ma lembe wu ni le loko. Esiku dede asiko yi. Hey guys, it's Adirunke again. Today, I'd like to give you an introduction to Yoruba incantations. <laughs> so think very deeply about how you feel. Think very deeply about how you feel when you hear the word incantation. I guess my purpose of starting this series is to demystify a lot of the big, big words that the English used and current Yoruba people, Nigerians, Christians, Muslims, people of other main in quotes, for lack of a better word, religions in Nigeria, these big words that they used to describe the more traditional but really just more basic things that are that are done or embraced you know in the traditional spiritual systems like ifa you know uh so to speak one of the words the scary words that you would hear is the word incantation oh those people say incantations <laughs> by those people of course they're referring to uh if spiritualists if i like should i even make it a class you know people who adopt the teachings and principles of good morals and good behavior and good living that the ifa philosophy or set of philosophies comprise of the purpose is to demystify incantations Ooh, what is that you use incantations almost every day i do too it, there's nothing scary fanciful you know exotic exclusive about incantations they are used as long as you say words you most likely say incantations in whatever religious or spiritual system that you follow it doesn't matter in yoruba we call incantations awful awful that's an incantation awful awful there are different types of like set of words that are used to make a wish whether it doesn't matter if it's a good wish or a bad wish to make a wish there's a wuri there's a yajo there's a kwe there's awful i've made a couple of videos for a wuri prayers and by prayers i mean the positive ones blessings you know but i haven't explored all the other ones in this one in the ones that i'll be making you know consequently after this video i'm going to be talking about awful for now awful awful to get into the meaning of the word it's important to i guess break it down <laughs> i like breaking words down and sentences uh i guess that's why my videos are usually long and those were appreciated too. Or when a word starts with or, it's usually something or someone, depending on what comes next and the kind of word that it is as a whole. Something or someone that is or has or does or is used to. Something or someone that is or has or does or is used to. So, in the example word, or de, de is a verb, it means hunt. Usually, the way that Yoruba words, many of them, especially of this kind, were formed, the verbs came first. The verbs came first, and then anyone who carries out the respective action would get their their name or their description you know just by infusing something with the verb that came first 
de is to hunt or de someone who hunts hunter so or de is hunter in this case or would be someone that because it's used a hunter is a person usually especially in the yoruba context i guess someone that does what do they do they hunt de so or de someone that hunts another word is ota ota ta is to shoot you know or to um it's like imagine someone throwing a stone at you or hat something or something from the ground just like I guess with a kind of speed something shoots at basically i think shoots gives the correct illustration that i'm trying to give but otter as a standalone word otter one word otter something that shoots so that's a bullet it doesn't matter if you're referring to the old <laughs> cartridge of the 1800s or you're referring to the bullet in the ak-47 as long as it's a bullet something sh something that shoots at, whether from a source or from something just with a kind of speed shoots at you or someone or ta bullet or ba is for someone is a king though not necessarily so it's what the yoruba people call kings however nothing about the word says that it has to be ascribed to men in a few years a lot of people might not like me because then i'm going to be making some proposals as far as thoughts are concerned and it may not even be a few years it could be tomorrow you know however because i'm divinely directed so whenever the people who guide me the spirits who guide me think it's the right time i will start to talk about these things and rather intensely the effects of patriarchy the effects of colonization and 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 things of that nature or ba someone who presides over ba is to preside over to to preside over oba oba lorie you know is like on top of it presides over it you know that kind of thing so oba is someone who presides i guess you could say someone who rules over over something or a particular sphere over people and uh and that is often translated to king could be queen you know nothing about the word says it has to be uh <laughs> masculine in a few years i'm going to talk about the effects of corruption the effects of <laughs> and am i get into a bit of trouble <laughs> The effects of corruption, the effects of the lack of truthfulness that now exists, that, that existed in the past and now exists even rather intensely. <laughs> this is the second time I'm using the word. With the way the Yoruba kings are chosen. I'm not zero minded, although long, long before, <laughs> especially before the introduction of Christianity to England there were deities and divinations were done but that was a long time ago that was a long time ago long time ago way longer than the era that i'm referring to then it was just the christianity or catholicism you know i guess they're one and the same in many respects as far as who the central persons of worship are then it was just if you're a boy doesn't matter how many sisters you have before you if you're a boy you're next in line to the throne of the king you know and king Henry the eighth of england then was obsessively looking for a son you know with wives and concubines that became wives and all of that catherine of aragon Anne Boleyn all these people all of his wives i think things changed in the era of mary mary the first 
of England. I don't know. I think she was the first queen. Then there was Queen Elizabeth I of England. So what happens when you don't have a calculated system of choosing who would be next in line to the throne is whoever was a male that was next just begin it doesn't matter if they were interested in making music or in doing something else they just had to you know because that was how things were done and if they didn't want it or they ran away or something the next male you know but usually that would that cause problems for england a lot of problems until Mary the first and Elizabeth the first did something about that during their time they were like the the forerunners of the battle against that kind of thinking in England where you know it just has to be a, a boy however amongst the Yoruba people where we have a calculated system of divination we had and we still have the first system of divination where if I not only strongly suggests but chooses who the king is you know you would expect that i guess there would be less patriarchy i guess less sexism less you know someone says god uh god made man in his own image wrote that in someone said that wrote that in the bible i think man made god in their own image from the way that deities are depicted amongst uh, deities and god you know or whatever with, with whichever the way they are depicted amongst people and how they are sculpted and how they are reverenced the names that they you know we make our gods in our own image you could say the same as apply to the ifa system of divination especially when it comes to choosing kings our spiritual texts our spiritual verses a spiritual whatever they are man-made they are man-made or man recorded you know man recorded so perspectives of people of course influenced the the things that were ascribed to to dates Olodumari amongst the Yoruba people for example is not inherently male or female neither is it fact but they're often portrayed like they were male, you know, or only male, or predominantly male, just like the angels. They don't have any, if you name a child, Michael, for example, and she happens to be a girl, people will look at you like, what are you saying? Michael is, Michael is not male. Michael doesn't have male genitals, doesn't have male anything. Michael can fight. But that doesn't necessarily make Michael male. So it's a name that a female can bear. So I feel like we have to relearn a lot of things as a society with the way that we think in such a linear small way or in lineal small ways. So in the case of Ofo, I've said that or is something or someone that is as does or is used to for is say or speak. For is say or speak, offer would be something that says or speaks if you're using does, or if you're using is used to, it would be something that is used to say or speak, something that is used to say or speak, or something that says, something that speaks. If A is used to do B, A does B. So does and is used to are pretty similar. Something that is used to say or speak, something that says or speaks. In essence, offer incantations would be a set of words that say or a set of words that are used to say. The something would be words, a word or words that say or set of words that I used to say. Kilo mean fo, kilo mean we, kilo mean so. <laughs> for we and so are 
kilon we kilon so kilon fo this that was me trying to do a dialect uh in simple yoruba kilon we kilon so kilon fo these three words mean speak or say kilo we kilo so the most used at this time are we and so kilo fo <laughs> for now it's most often used for something that is it, it's most likely used for washing you know to wash for yoruba for you know that's when it's used for speak but for asho wash a cloth you know so people now <laughs> are more familiar with for as the word that means wash than it is the word that means speak or say for we so these are the words that mean speak or say so offer is an old yoruba word that means you know a word that speaks or says something else something that is used to say something that says so that's an introduction to what the word means in and of itself to make any wish whether it's a good wish whether it's a bad wish doesn't matter what kind of wish it is a wish is a wish it might be positive for me to say oh, i want this girl to be my friend you know to text me for example that might be my wish she might not want to she might say oh i wish my phone goes off so that i wouldn't have to text ronke for example for her it's a positive wish for me it's not my wish to be texted may be positive to me it may be negative to her for any wish verbs and herbs are two essential parts of making any wish come true if you ask me between both i would say herbs are secondary to verbs because as human beings we have a she and i have a whole entire <laughs> video on a she so i'm not going to reteach I, I i try not to reteach because then it's frustrating for people who have seen the the first video the video that i'm referring to because we have a she verbs are more important to a degree when the, and this is spiritually speaking you know in another context they may not be more important depends on how you think herbs are secondary so if i if i feel sick now or, or you know i just feel weary and i say i will be fine i've used the verb be i will be fine i will be in the spiritual sense you know i've taken that proactive action so in the spiritual sense that is obviously the most important step just telling yourself as a divine being with ashe i will be fine you know you are making your own ashe on your own self or you are telling someone else you will be fine you're exercising your own ashe on them you know so the herbs would then come after spiritually speaking so if i go to my kitchen and i make a cup of peppermint tea or something the herbs are coming after but i have gotten up and put a piece of cloth on and you know a reason from my sick bed and said i will be fine or i am fine i'm not sick you know just verbs but in the in the physical sense let's say you have god forbid cancer i guess herbs would have to come before verbs i i don't know it depends on how you think to me i still think verbs will come before herbs but medically speaking herbs i mean medicine plants whatever chemotherapy whatever where you're getting your herbs they have to come first before verbs I'm, I'm saying this for all righteousness you know sake to me i still believe that in whatever case whether physical or spiritual the verbs have to come first because 
then your the the herbs would work better would work faster <laughs> but that's that's a different thing for another day when you refer to an happening or fact to create an effect you are saying an incantation so this brings us to how google defines incantation and it's something like this words that are said or spelt spell 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 spelt spell spelt words that are said or spelt to create a spiritual or magical effect that's an incantation a set of words it could even be one in the case of abracadabra i don't know what it means i don't know what the original language is for all i know it could mean be it could be mean happen it could mean come to pass it could be disappear it could be whatever it means from whatever language it is you feel, you, ha you have to demystify it right you have to know what the original language is you have to understand what the very word in its essence means incantations are basically statements that are not inherently positive or negative so they are very much dependent on use it's, you take a known fact you use it however you choose to if you choose to use it positively use it positively if you choose to use it negatively use it negatively what are the sources of incantations history spiritual beliefs so narratives regarding the human or non-human incarnations of deities most especially when it's their victories or their strengths history spiritual beliefs about a particular deity or ascended master or some event that happened in jerusalem or some event that happened in oyo with orumila you know just beliefs that align with your spiritual practice societal observations nature-based observations for many belief systems like christianity most of the incantations now before you bite me <laughs> i'll get there most of the incantations are from the bible not anything else that may have happened anywhere else most of the time when an incantation is said because there's a spiritual text it is followed so it would be an incantation from the bible however with ifa with the ifa spirituality we have history based incantations we have spiritual beliefs spiritual belief based incantation so nigba torun mi la koja si fe to ro mo birin meji kan won ni babo gbodo ku o ni ku you know that kind of thing something that happened that is in alignment with your practice society so we we tifa the four come to play societal observations nature based observations these four are what our incantations comprise of what exactly is the purpose of an incantation to buttress or reinforce a curse or blessing an incantation can be said before it to buttress or reinforce a curse or blessing an incantation can be said before it abracadabra i want to appear in the arms of michael jackson for example abracadabra i wish for and i may not necessarily use the word wish you know in any kind of prayer this is me just using the typical hollywood example that you may be more familiar with i wish upon a kiss from prince prince the musician of course on the chick right now <laughs> you know so this is a blessing this is a a positive wish a blessing i want this gift to be the gift of a chick of a ch kiss to be bestowed on me even though i can't see it and i can't feel it i'm wishing for it to buttress it i've decided to use the word abrac abrac i don't know anything about harry potter i don't know anything about you know anything that is related to hollywood witchcraft fantasy movies but i'm using abracadabra as an example the yoruba way 
of making a wish by saying an incantation before a blessing occurs is seen in other cultures and other spiritual systems so the abracadabra i wish for a star something like that it can be seen even amongst the english before christianity amongst the english because you have to recognize that christianity is not an english uh, <laughs> spiritual well you could you could say it is because it was after but not necessarily jesus jesus is the person that we call jesus today when he was on earth as a person his name was yehoshua or something it wasn't even english so even their own culture got appropriated <laughs> you know so to speak or like a well well that's that's a that's a bad way to think about it. I wouldn't say appropriated, just Europeanized, so to speak. The paintings of Jesus and the descriptions of Jesus and the thoughts of Jesus are very, very European. And the man never spoke a, a word of English in his life. Think of Rumi. Rumi's um, words have been translated to English and, you know, his it's, it's po poems have been translated to English. Some of the things that may have said may have been, of course, Rumi never spoke English. So some of the things that may have said may not be exactly as they appear in English. The practice of using incantations, of spelling, right? <laughs> of people, of spelling can be seen amongst other cultures and spiritual systems. However advanced they they present themselves to be or think they are in comparison with other other systems and cultures you can see it when you use an incantation you reference something that has happened it could be history it could be a spiritual belief it could be an observation it could be nature based whatever it is you reference it it's like saying incantations is basically referencing referencing something that's a person uh, in in the hollywood context in the harry potterish context a set of words that an old witch may have said you know that worked for her that would be more of the uh, it words like abracadabra and some other words that have now gone extinct but people actually spoke then or, or you know like latin or whatever using them as a reference for your own wish like i said you use these reference before you say your prayer to not only increase increase the potency of your prayer but to deepen it a bit <laughs> for lack of a better word to deepen it to give it a bit of depth and base to add more to its ash to, to the ashe that you have to command it into being you reference something that is similar to it you reverence and a time when it came to pass you reference a set of words that was probably given to an ancestor of yours that worked for them when it came to making requests that are similar to yours referencing is what incantation is all about referencing because that happened or because that happens because that happens or because that happened a similar thing would happen in this situation whether it's your situation or someone else's situation when you say an incantation when you use an incantation when you incantate in quotes because i don't think incantate is an official word when you incantate you're saying because that happens because that happened, a similar thing would happen in this situation, in my situation, in that situation that I'm referring to. I'll give you an example. A tooth is never lonely. You will never be lonely. What's the incantation here? A tooth is never lonely. It's a plain statement. It's a... Uh, to me doesn't matter if you you think it makes any sense but to me i'm using it as an incantation because i believe that it is a it is a fact 
why is a tooth never lonely? And I came up with this. Why is a tooth never lonely? They are always so close to one another. A tooth is never lonely because even if a person's mouth is missing a tooth and the tooth looks to their right and they don't find any tooth, if they look down, they will most likely find another tooth like them. If they look towards the left, they will most likely, and I'm personifying a tooth now, they will most likely find another tooth beside them. So teeth are always together. They are never lonely. I'm using a tooth is never lonely here. It's a plain statement, but it's a, it's a, it's poetic. Like it doesn't always have to be plain language. As a matter of fact, most of the time it will not always be plain language. But when you think about it, it would make sense. I'm using that kind of language to buttress. I'm praying for my son. Oh, my son has just given me. I don't have a son. But let's say I have an imaginary son. My son has just given me a cup of water. And I... Oh, so, oh, sorry. My son has just texted me at a time that I was lonely. Very briefly lonely. And I, I'm praying for this for my son. Right? And I say, a tooth is never lonely. You will never be lonely, Ashe. You will never have a curse to, to cry as a result of loneliness. You will always have someone beside you supporting you giving you their shoulder you would never be lonely i'm using the tooth is never lonely as an incantation it's positive to me a tooth is never lonely is not in and of itself positive or negative it's just a statement that i've come up with right it's just, it's not a, you may, you may think it's nonsense you may think that's extremely flimsy that doesn't make any you know but to me I think it makes sense and I'm using it as an incantation. If I want to use that same mindset, that same phenomenon negatively, I can say a tooth never has breathing space. A tooth never has privacy. You will never have privacy. Whether you think it's a curse or not would depend on you. To me, I think that's a curse. (laughs) <laughs> a tooth never had who doesn't need privacy so obviously that would be negative that would be more in the category of curse than it is in the category of blessing then i would be using it the same phenomenon negatively it just depends on the set of words that i choose to spell all right <laughs> all right <laughs> it just depends on the set of words that i choose to spell while I'm making my spell, while I'm making my wish. So that's basically how incantations go. If I say the weather is always warm in the summer, or if I say something like this, if I say something like this, the weather is always hot in the summer. You will always be hot and uneasy. The weather is always hot in the summer. It's just a plain sentence. How I choose to use it is dependent on me. So I'm using it as a curse in this case to say, because the, the sun makes one uneasy in the summer, then the person I'm talking to, I'm cursing will be uneasy. If I say the sun is always warm and nice in the summer, you will never be cold when you need warmth the most. In that case, you would be using that fact. The known fact that you know it's always hot in the summer it depends on how you see it if you see, see it as a good thing then you use it positively if you see it as a bad thing you'll use it negatively whatever fact that you accept in in that example it would be a nature-based um fact that has become an incantation you know influenced by perspective as well with the usage as far as the usage is concerned There's another one that I want to mention, and this is a longer one. No one has ever given their elbow a French kiss while their arm is still connected to their shoulder. No one has ever given their elbow a French kiss while their arm is still connected to your shoulder. So try it. Try to give yourself a kiss on the shoulder and see how difficult it is. You will never give yourself pleasure. 
in this case no one has ever given their sh their airport french please blah 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 shoulder is the incantation you will never give yourself pleasure is the wish it's a bad wish of course it's a curse so it depends on what you're here i'm taking a <laughs> i guess a, a society a nature-based observation or a societal observation whatever it is um and making it the incantation sort of like the basis i've said incantations are for reinforcing your wish your wishes reinforcing because this happens this would happen because this happened this would apply kind of thing so it depends on what you're here i'm taking a <laughs> i guess a, a society a nature-based observation or a societal observation whatever it is um and making it the incantation sort of like the basis i've said incantations are for reinforcing your wish your wishes reinforcing because this happens this would happen because this happened this would apply kind of thing so statements that are that are not inherently positive or negative are incantations dependent on the usage now i'm going to take a biblical example and usually when incantations that are bible based are to be used they usually start with the bible says or you know i guess from what i've seen from observation the bible says this and this especially if you come to nigeria it's used a lot you know the bible says and they they give an history based like happening or like you know i said earlier that with the christians the incantations are usually from the bible so when you say when the lord brought back the captivity of zion we were like those you know you're praying and you say when the lord brought back the captivity of zion we were like those who dream when god restores you it will be like a dream it will be speed you know whatever however you choose to pray you're using the the bible as your like source for incantations and you're taking uh positive uh, like a positive thing i guess this this was this was an happening you know history based when the lord brought back we're like those who do when the lord brings back your 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 whatever you've lost it would feel like a dream you know it would be so great you would not be able to comprehend it kind of thing so in this case that's the incantation then you make your prayer when it comes to the ifa uh spirituality there is and house would usually start with like and it, it, it doesn't matter it's something that i'm going to be teaching or like explaining in consequent videos it doesn't matter that it has to be i've said that with the yoruba people it's the four that we use so history spiritual beliefs or like spiritual histories general observations just na nature based observations whatever observation like it doesn't always have to be something that happened with one of our deities or but you know our incantations come from everywhere so but if you were to use an incantation from the Odrifa, you usually start with ah, Odrifa for Rumila. Igba ti ba ba ti kole onu ba wa sili aye. Eh, wani, wani, wani kon rubo. Ebo fi ebo da. The kind of thing. It's like when Rumila came to the world, he went through this, but he was able to. There was a solution, you know. He was able to go past that problem. Therefore, you will be able to as well because it did this and did that therefore just as you're about to do the same thing or something similar whatever issues you have whatever problems you have will be resolved because you've taken the same steps that were recommended to Morumila. therefore you won't have any issues anymore it can be anything it doesn't always have to be from the old if you say anybody that is akpa 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 uh also let you come out sooner you know it, it doesn't always have to be like oh be, uh, what or what happened to a romila what happened to a shunga to the what to call it does, it doesn't always have to be like something that happened to someone it can be from anywhere and everywhere for the muslims their incantations could be from anywhere too you know 
uh, Muhammad Salallahu Alaihi Salam said uh, in something something that if you do this and you do that, uh, your ways will be through. Therefore, your ways will be smooth. Something like that. You just everyone just take takes from with the Yoruba people. We are not limited to like where we can draw our incantations from, but usually people who have more structured like who who, who have religions not because if i is not a it's not really considered a religion you know and we're, we're trying not to not to make it one you know I'm, I'm a big advocate for not making it one because minute something becomes a religion you have problems it's almost like the brainwashing starts so but for the for the for the religions that exist the tend to just draw from like this one place you know it's like this body of work nothing else just always draw your incantations your whatever you use in your prayers and your wishes from this body of work you know so i've seen that with christianity islam and others moving on incantations may or may not lead to invocations incantations may or may not lead to invocations in the case of the church singing unto zion an everlasting joy shall be upon your you know, you're you're taking a part of the of the bible using it as an incantation and in the process there is invocation and that is why some people may feel like the spirit at the time there's intoxication there's invocation sorry there's invocation and then there's intoxication with not uh is intoxication the right word i, mean, I don't mean it in the bad like aqua like sense just you are filled with the spirit kind of thing you can see it amongst us as well you know the yoruba people in Isheshe and all of that it's there amongst amongst the indians amongst like you know it's just everywhere i try not to i guess look at other religions or spiritual systems condescendingly because I, I, and that's the problem with like when you are in a religion you tend to do that but when you're not in a religion then you you i guess you're you're more open to seeing that a lot of things unite us than divide us as far as like seeking not human help is concerned not human assistance so that's about it for the introduction you take a statement you apply it before you say prayer because this happens or this happened or this is the case you know whatever i wish would align with that and it's if it's a bad wish that you want to make you take a a statement a, a, an happening you know you apply it negatively use it for your negative wish to try not to do that always do the positive wishes you use incantations to say because when the children of israel went to the wilderness they got all the food that they needed i will never go hungry because when Oshu was looking for a child and she took a brass figure and she began to treat it like a child she got pregnant and had her own child i will have my own child by doing something similar you know you just take something you use it for yourself for your own situation and you it's like your you say you're charging it up you're saying because this like you're for the spirits who are going to respond to you you're referencing this happened in this case please let it happen in mine as well it worked in the past you see it worked why not let it work in this case and it's a part of wish making prayer because whatever that you want to you you you, you call it it's a it's an essential part of of doing that because i can't just say from observation because that's a weak support for for the argument but just from the way that the world works and practically that's how everyone prays or almost everyone 
then you know it, it is it has been seen as effective so i hope that i've been able to <laughs> give you a, a, a detailed lesson on on incantations and what their uses how they were what offer the word for incantation even means and everything that you may need first as an introduction if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask thank you so so much for always like liking my videos and for those who have subscribed thank you so much and thank you for your support please continue to support my channel thank you so so much and i'll see you in the next video enjoy the rest of your day and goodbye